This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is a pot of boiling water, and I'm gonna stick my finger in it. Did that hurt? Eh, not really. Check it out under the thermal imaging camera. Yeah, my finger is hot, but not nearly as hot as the water in the pot, and watch how fast it cools down. It's cooling, it's cooling, it's cooling. It's as cool as the rest of my hand. We're all good. Like many experienced cooks, I often taste hot stews and sauces and such with a quick dip of my finger. It's a very efficient way to assess whether something needs more salt or whatever. You don't have to get out a spoon, nor do you have to get the spoon dirty, nor do you have to dirty the surface on which you will put the spoon when you're done with it. Finger dipping is way better, which is why professional chefs do it all the time, as long as they think you're not looking. And every time I do the finger dip here on the internet, I imagine that it's mostly young people, less experienced people, who write in the comments asking, are you scalding yourself? And the answer is no, I'm not scalding myself. I mean, I'm pretty stupid and I burn myself in the kitchen all the time, but not when I dip my finger in a sauce. This hardly hurts at all, and how is that possible? Well, for a few reasons, but one of them is the same reason why I can do this. When you were little, did an adult in your life ever try to freak you out by like lighting a match and then swiping their finger through it? And you think, oh my God, why aren't you burning yourself? You can send your finger straight through an open flame, as long as it's not like a white hot flame, because a burn injury is a function of several factors, one of which is the heat of the thing that you're touching, but another factor is time. How long are you touching it? If you just swipe your finger really fast through the flame, you're not gonna burn yourself. But let's get back to liquids. Here are some numbers from the American Society of Plumbing Engineers. These are the times and water temperatures that will result in second degree scalding burns on a typical adult. People who work in plumbing have to know such things, which is why this chart is in their handbook. At the low end, we see a balmy 120 Fahrenheit 49C. Let's try sticking a finger in that. Feels like bath water. My wife's bath water. She's insane because even this low temperature can seriously scald you if given enough time. Nine minutes for a second degree burn according to that chart. A second degree burn is actual tissue damage that goes a little deeper than your outer layer of skin. That's a real injury. And after a minute and a half, yep, I'm done with that, ouch. It's just like the whole pasteurization thing that we deal with here in the kitchen all the time. Most foodborne pathogens are going to die within seconds if you heat your food up to 160 Fahrenheit, 70 C thereabouts. But if you hold the food at something like 135 Fahrenheit, 57 C, you can kill those same bugs over some much longer amount of time. Sources vary as to the specifics, and it probably depends on a lot of factors, but the many hours this meat had in a very low oven probably killed just as many germs as I could have killed by cooking the meat totally gray in the center instead of pink. Same deal with your own flesh. How many of your own cells you kill is a function of how hot the thing is that you're touching and how long you touch it. Sure, the plumber's chart says that second degree burns happen instantaneously above 160 Fahrenheit, 71C, and boiling is way hotter than that, but instantaneously is not a very precise unit of time. There is, indisputably, a very big difference between an instant like this and an instant like this. Like, that doesn't hurt at all? That kind of hurts. This doesn't hurt at all for me. For me, I want to emphasize that I'm talking about my own personal practices and experiences here in the kitchen. What you do may be different. Your results may vary, and I encourage you to do what feels safe for you. I do have pretty calloused hands for someone who's not a farmer or a gymnast, so maybe this does feel a little different to me than it might feel to you, but I find that I can safely stick my finger into a boiling water-based liquid if I do it with a little flick. I think the flicking motion keeps me safe in a couple of ways. One is that it just makes for a very short, very brief moment of actual contact between my finger and the stuff that's in the pot. That gives less time for heat energy inside the pot to transfer into my flesh. The flick also has the effect of rapidly cooling the thin residue of water clinging to my finger. Think about it, when you really burn your hand on anything, there's a thing that you do instinctively. You shake your hand, right? You go, ah! What you're doing, whether you're aware of it or not, 
is exposing the hot part of your finger to lots and lots of air molecules really, really fast. More air molecules, comparatively cool air molecules that you can expose your finger to, the more energy is gonna transfer out from the surface of your finger and into the atmosphere in your kitchen, and you're gonna cool your finger down faster than if you were to just hold still. The flicking maneuver whips a bunch of air right past your finger and cools down the liquid that's still stuck to you. That's another reason why tasting sauces with your finger is so convenient. If you taste with a spoon, you've got a much deeper pool of liquid. It's not a thin film, it's a little pool, so there's comparatively less surface area and it's gonna cool down slower. You can't just wave the spoon around to cool it off or you're gonna redecorate your kitchen, right? What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it here and you're gonna blow on it to send fresh air molecules across it and cool it down. And even if you're so tough that you don't mind burning your mouth, you simply won't be able to taste what you need to taste if it's too hot for tasting. With the finger flick, a thin film of sauce arrives up at your mouth at a totally manageable temperature almost instantaneously. And of course, this simulation is fundamentally unrealistic. How often do you taste a sauce that's at a full rolling boil? Most sauces I make would be burning at that temperature. I simmer sauces, and a bare simmer is around 185 Fahrenheit, 85 Celsius, way cooler than the boiling point, which is good because real sauces are a lot more viscous than plain water. A film of plain water is very thin, so proportionally more of it is in contact with the air, which means it's gonna cool down and indeed totally evaporate very quickly. A thick sauce has proportionally less surface area and thus will not cool down as fast on your finger. So it's good that I generally don't taste sauces at a full rolling boil. And here's another way in which the water comparison breaks down. Real sauces have lots of kinds of molecules in them other than H2O. And burn injuries are a function of temperature, time, and the materials involved. The plumber's chart is only about plain water. Other materials will burn you at different times and temperatures. Let's try fat. I'm gonna heat this oil to the same temperature we were trying before with the water, which was the boiling point, 212 Fahrenheit, 100 C. The boiling point of water under normal atmospheric conditions, well under the boiling point of oil. Well, technically oil doesn't boil at all. The bubbles that we see when something is frying are actually water boiling out of the food. The oil itself doesn't have a boiling point. It has a flash point. That's a temperature, a much higher temperature, at which the oil will burst into flames and turn into smoke. But what if you heated oil in a zero oxygen atmosphere, like a special atmosphere where combustion could not happen? Would you eventually hit a temperature where the oil would start to evaporate, like boil away? I looked for a science answer to that question and I couldn't find one. If you have one, let me know. Anyway, what do we think is gonna happen when I stick my finger into oil at the boiling point of water? Will it hurt more or less than water at the same temperature? I'm gonna guess it's gonna hurt more. The oil is more viscous, right? So when I dip my finger in there, it's gonna be a thicker layer with proportionally less surface area to shed heat into the atmosphere. It's gonna cool down slower. And so I think that's gonna maybe hurt my finger a little bit more. Plus oil is way less volatile than water, right? Like it's not gonna be evaporating off of my finger. So that's my prediction. My prediction is the oil at the same temperature of boiling water is gonna hurt more than water. Wrong. That does not hurt at all. That actually feels kind of nice, like something you'd pay for somebody to do to you at a spa. So why does the oil hurt less than the water? Well, it's because the oil actually contains less heat. The heat capacity of oil is much lower than that of water, meaning it took less energy to get this up to 100 C. The heat capacity of water is like twice that of oil. So twice as much heat energy is stored in here, in the water. As a result, a lot more heat gets transferred into my finger, and this hurts more than oil does at the same temperature. Also, water is far more thermally conductive than oil. I know I'm simplifying the science here, but basically, according to this paper, water will transfer its heat into my finger nearly four times as fast as the cooking oil will. On the other hand, higher thermal conductivity also means that the film of water on my finger is going to be faster at transferring its heat out into the atmosphere, away from my body. So maybe the thermal conductivity factor is kind of a wash, but I definitely know that the oil hurts way less than the water. So it's perfectly safe to touch hot oil with your finger, right? No!
The main reason people choose to cook food in oil rather than water is that oil can get way hotter than water can at normal atmospheric pressure. Nobody cooks food in 212 Fahrenheit oil, and if they do, they call it oil poaching or confit, not frying. Frying is the main thing we use oil for, frying at like 350 Fahrenheit, 175 C. Playing the part of my finger will be this chunk of sweet potato. That would hurt. We must all be much more cautious around hot oil, because oil can and indeed does get way hotter than water in the kitchen. So getting back to our topic of the day, dipping fingers in sauces, it might be relatively painless to dip your finger into a hot water-based sauce. What about dipping your finger in a hot fat or oil-based sauce? Like beurre blanc, one of my favorites. Some minced shallots into a hot pan with a splash of white wine, reduce that au sec, turn off the heat, and when it stops bubbling, you slowly melt in butter. A lot of butter. Beurre blanc means white butter. The sauce is mostly butter, which is why it's so friggin' delicious. Time to taste for seasoning, and does that hurt? Not in the slightest. If I could cover my entire body in this stuff, I would. Why isn't it too hot to touch? Well, because most fat-based sauces are emulsions. Fat molecules and water molecules join together by an emulsifier. In this case, it's the casein protein in the butter. And when you get emulsions really hot, they break. If you didn't know what people mean when they talk about a sauce breaking, behold, I bring the sauce to a boil, the casein proteins denature, the water and oil phases separate, which causes a huge drop in viscosity and we no longer have beurre blanc. We have browned butter. And yeah, it might hurt to stick your finger into that, but you would never get this sauce so hot to begin with, so it's a moot point. But what about a sugar-based sauce, i.e. a syrup? As you may have seen, last week we tapped the sap out of a hickory tree in my backyard. I'm guessing that's about 95% water, 4% sugar, 1% dissolved minerals and amino acids and trace bug parts and other stuff. I boiled this down for hours, and once a syrup hits about 60% sugar, the temperature starts to climb way higher than the normal boiling point of water. That hurts a little. Keep going, and once you have almost all the water boiled out, you're talking something that could be well north of 300 Fahrenheit, 150C. It still doesn't have the heat capacity of water, but it's as hot as fryer oil. It's even more viscous than fryer oil, and unlike oil, it solidifies the instant you get it on your skin, so you can't just wipe it off. No substance in the kitchen scares me more than hot syrup. Respect the syrup. So if we're talking about an extremely sweet sauce, like Chinese American style sweet and sour sauce, or Kansas City barbecue sauce, something that's like more than 50% sugar, yeah, I might think twice before I dip my finger in it, if it is bubbling. But for most other things, nah, just swipe and taste. Works great for me. You do what is safe for you. For me, swipe and taste is as efficient and effective as Squarespace is for building and running a website. And Squarespace comes with virtually no risk of injury. I mean, I suppose if you're really, really bad with technology, maybe. In which case, I would recommend the hire an expert feature in Squarespace. They can connect you with people who will do all the work of setting up your online store or your restaurant menu and reservations portal, your personal portfolio site, whatever. They'll do it. But I bet that you can do it yourself without burning a single part of your body. You pick a template, replace their stock pictures and text with yours, and you just start dropping in whatever blocks you need. Like there's the menu block for a restaurant. There's a scheduler block for a service business where you take appointments online. You don't have to burn a single dollar drafting a site like this. It's totally free, but when you decide to publish your site or register a domain name, save 10% with my code Ragusia at checkout. Thank you, Squarespace. And thank you, Fingers. Best tools you got in the kitchen. As the great Marco Pierre White once said, no fingers, no food. That kind of makes it sound like he's going to cook my fingers. Wouldn't put it past him.